have um, watertight bulkheads. I don't see another way to get into my bilge other than ripping up the floors. I've officially put a hole in my boat. This is going to be one half of the bulkhead. So I labeled them port, starboard. This is what we ended up with. So starboard. One of the biggest challenges I've been having uh, with this refit is staying focused on one particular project. Of course, the problem with that is you get to a certain point in a project and you need to wait on a part. But the weather's not cooperating. It's very cold right now. So I, there's not a lot I can do on the boat, here at the boat, in terms of uh, epoxy work or uh, fiberglass or anything like that. And I've got a fair bit of that to do. So the cutlass bearing has been removed. Success! Which is a, a huge milestone in my winter uh, chore list. Um, however, I need to, ordering the new one's not a problem. The problem is getting it back in because I do need to do some epoxy work around the aperture and also in order to make these things fit uh, you, you need to put them in the freezer um, but that assumes that uh, it's 80 or 90 degrees outside and the rest of uh, the drive system is uh, nice and warm and expanded. Uh, right now it's uh, 30 degrees so putting it in the freezer is not going to do any good. So the point of that little aside is that I'm stalled on that particular part of the refit. Uh, now, <clears throat> I want to have a nice, clean, white bilge. And as tempted as I am to, because one of the long-term uh, projects I want to have is to uh, have uh, watertight bulkheads in underneath, uh, basically anywhere, underneath the water line, which means ripping up these um, lockers and benches, which I would love to just start on right now. But if I do that, I'm concerned that I'm not going to have it back together in time for this summer's boating season, and I don't want to make the same mistake this summer I made last summer, which was uh, underestimating the time involved in getting these things done. However, I don't see another way to Get into my bilge other than ripping up the floors, the floorboards, uh, especially if I want to uh, do anything with um, putting some lateral fiberglass stringers back and forth uh, through here, um, uh, again for uh, watertight uh, purposes. It's been a couple weeks since I've been down to the boat and part of the reason for that is we've had extraordinarily cold weather over the last week or two and today ironically it's 40 degrees out it's actually colder inside the building than it is outside when i'm back and i'm going to be attacking the floorboards again one of the issues i had uh the last time i was here well let me show you here is uh, one side that i've been able to remove now i use a circular saw and thought i had the depth set pretty well uh, as you can see here, you've got a, a good half inch to an inch between the boards and the hull, and I kept going. As you can see here, I hope you can see there, um, kind of, you see that slot, that cut mark? Um, well, the, the depth of the hull starts to rise here, and of course I wasn't paying attention. I think you can guess what happened next. That's what happened next. That is a, I'm zooming in on it, so it's about a two inch cut um, right through the hull. So if I put it in the water right now, it would take on water and sink. I'm not that worried about it. Um, and I'll patch it up when the weather, when the temperature gets warmer. But another example of where impatience can lead to more work, and it certainly has here. So I've officially put a hole in my boat which I'm going to have to take care of. So the way that I'm going to be approaching this today is I'm going to try my multi-tool and see if I can't use that to separate the, the floorboard from the hull there. And if that doesn't work, then what I'm going to do is use a drill 
drill a starter hole with my biggest bit and then attack it with a uh, with a sawzall uh, and see if uh, I can't get a nice controlled cut that way. At the very least, if the sawzall hits the hull, it's gonna, you know, it'll kick back. Uh, and it won't put a hole in the hull. Okay. So let's see if it works. Okay. All right. So far, the uh, multi-tool is the right tool to use for this, and this is where I am this far. You can see I have a lot more control with it, and the cut is much more fine. Now, my biggest concern, of course, is doing anything to the fiberglass hull. I don't know if you can see this. I think you can. This is the seam where the floorboard meets the hull and it can get a little confusing I think this floorboard has been glassed over you can see up here so I'm going to be very carefully uh, just sinking in maybe a quarter of an inch at the most along that seam and that really should be enough to get this board up I've been s I'm going to be saving the boards uh, to use as patterns for the new board that's going to go down. Now I'm hoping, because so far this board hasn't budged and I've got through cuts here and on this side as well. It's all the way through. So I'm really hoping that there's no, that this hasn't been glassed in here. I don't want to have to uh, cut around that, but we'll see. It's under there. Uh. All right. Let's see if I cut into the hole. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, multi-tool. Definitely what you want to go with. Hello, I'm back. It's uh, been a couple of weeks, I think, since the last time I was here. Uh, my lighting situation has improved. Uh, this is great, so I'm just stumbling around in the dark. It's hard enough when it's cold out. Uh, it's still cold out. We got a couple of inches of snow last night, which uh, validates my decision to spend the extra $200 to have the boat stored inside. I think it was the best money I've ever spent, at least on this project. So what I'm gonna be doing today, I'm on my uh, midwinter break. Uh, so I've got the next week, uh, and my kids are still in school, which is a great combination. So I'll have the next week uh, pretty much to myself. A lot I want to get done during that week, and what I'm going to be doing today or focusing on today is uh, finish, uh, complete removing the floorboards. Okay, so those uh, need to come out. and. Then uh, I'm going to be making 
some uh, templates, some patterns. And the way I'm going to do that is, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it with, um, with a system called, or a technique called flagging off. I don't really have uh, enough room to do that here. So I went to a dollar store and got a bunch of uh, popsicle sticks or things that look like uh, tongue depressors and a glue gun. And I will be using those to construct my own pattern. So if I get uh, that out today, and I guess uh, a few of the patterns made, it'll be a, it'll be a good day. Just about completed removing the floor, and I was able to get some vacuuming done. So I got rid of the uh, engine compartment fiberglass box there. It was just in the way and causing way too much trouble. Place it with a board, and this is the boat without the floor. So I have issue here with the supports this is where my fiberglass bulkheads are going to go and I gotta figure out um, if I need to pop this off remove this remaining piece of board so that I can get in um, a single piece of wood in there for the bulkhead or if I can join the two uh, with epoxy and then glass it in same issue over here which means that I'll be removing the uh, bathroom floor as well um, not sure how I'm going to deal uh, with that or approach that I'm trying to keep this within the bounds of what's reasonable to expect to accomplish uh, this week and then one more week Probably at the beginning of April, that's when my spring break is. Um, it's too cold to do any glassing right now. Um, I could probably you know, try to get another heater in here and see if that doesn't raise things up to about uh, 50 degrees. Uh, then it might make sense I could uh, use a quick setting hardener. Um, and then be I get some of the glassing taken care of as well uh, this week so I wouldn't have to. Uh, save it all for that week in April. The only thing I want to be doing in April is detailing the uh, the deck, finishing off the footwell in the cockpit, and uh, you know, reassembling the companion way, getting the combings in, uh, basically putting uh, everything back together that's uh, uh, removed from the boat right now. Also, any engine issues that might arise during uh, during April again. It's just it's too cold right now. Okay, so time to break out the tongue depressors and the glue gun. Well, I've never used uh, one of these before. I'll try to keep that view there for you. Now, this is going to be one half of the bulkhead, which is going to join the centerboard trunk here. So, plug in, see how we do. I'm going to be gluing them together sort of vertically like that, uh, just attaching them all the way down, trying to get uh, a decent shape.
So this is my attempt using uh, a hot glue gun and tongue depressors um, at uh, tracing out the general outline or pattern for the bulkheads that, I, mean, I, I suppose they're, I mean, they're bulkheads, but they're going in the bilge, so call them stringers too, I guess, although stringers are more, the long, they, uh, they run uh, about a stern. So I labeled them port, starboard, and floor because that's going to define the plane when I cut it out. So I'll get a 2x4 and start with this. Make sure they're lined up here and then trace the, the rest of it up and cut that out. I really need to figure out a way to get it warm in here. So I'm thinking about getting a drop cloth um, remover's blanket, putting it over the uh, hatch here. See if that doesn't insulate a little bit. Keep some warm air, warm air in here. I just have this reflective heater. I have another one, space heater that I'll uh, I'll bring. Although the space heaters you don't want to leave plugged in, they draw a lot of energy. And if your extension cord can't take it, uh, that's how you melt wires, and that's how boats burn in storage. Okay, so I'm in my garage right now, and. The patterns I cut out when I was down at the boat yesterday, yesterday, that was yesterday, uh, I've uh, laid out. So what I've done here is I went down to Home Depot and I got some some wood and we're going to cut out these patterns. Now, you, you might uh, notice I'm not using marine plywood. Um, I, I just, I can't justify the cost. I need to use uh, epoxy anyway on uh, other parts of the project. So this is... Uh, uh, weather treated pine and I'll be uh, using penetrating epoxy and then I'll seal it with regular epoxy and then I'll glass it in and that really should be enough to, to seal it and keep it from rotting out. Now you might notice that this is my floor piece so the imaginary uh, line on the uh, sole or the uh, hull of the boat, the floor, begins there and the pattern extends beyond my six inches there. So I don't recall if the, this, the pattern went all the way up or not, but if it did, I'll just, um, you know, I dropped a 90 degree angle there. And if it did, then I'll use um, uh, some shimming here, uh, just to prop it up a little bit. Uh, because this actually, I mean, this is the outline. This is where it'll be resting on the hull, right here. This piece here, this portion here, is um, going to be waste, or not used at least. And so, that's the starboard side. And I did the same over here for port. So I'm gonna cut these out, and then tomorrow we will see how well they fit. They don't have to be perfect, because I'm gonna have um, either uh, epoxy or 5200 underneath. Uh, we'll see. Probably epoxy. Okay, got them cut it out. Had to use the jigsaw. That wasn't easy. Sozzle uh, would have probably, my reciprocating saw, but the sozzle probably would have been much better. But that's down at the boat. This is what we ended up with. Okay, starboard, port, and the idea is that uh, in here is the centerboard trunk, and uh, this is going to get glassed over. So, fairly thick, should make a good bulkhead. Hopefully these things will fit tomorrow, and all i got to do now is wait for the weather to come around and warm up enough that I can work with epoxy and resin. Okay, I'm back. Um, I think this is uh, day three, I think, that I've been able to get down here for uh, during, you know, over my winter break. I was able to pick up a moving blanket from uh, Harbor Freight. I think it was like $8. And I mean, it's not insulated, but it at least covers the holes. So 
We'll see if I can get it up to uh, 50 degrees in here. Uh, I've got a space heater chugging away over uh, off camera. And uh, if I can do that, then I can glass and epoxy with fast hardener uh, or the cold weather formula. I won't have to wait until April. So keep my fingers crossed on that. Now, the patterns I cut out yesterday. Let's see if, uh, if those are gonna work. My camera can stay in focus. Okay. Sharp fiberglass. Ouch. Okay. The starboard piece. The popsicle stick pattern I made went right along here and then up. It's a rough surface. As you can see I've got some leftover. I, I mean, I guess this is, it's gotta be some kind of resin or epoxy. Never seen anything like that before. It's black. It kinda looks like tar. All right, so starboard. A little bit. Now she fits. Huh. Okay, not bad. I do have some, a little bit of space. I don't know if I can, I can't see the screen. So I don't know if I'm showing you or not. I do have some space down here and up here, which I'll fill in with some shivs. Also, this needs to... So I've got a pretty good fit along the hull here and a little bit of room here. So the shivs I use are going to have to do that and uh, bring it up level. But uh, this I can work with. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because it's going to get glassed in. Okay, so let's just try the uh, port side and uh, see if that fits as well. Okay, so port. Okay, so uh, there's a piece of uh, wood or glass here that I need to trim off and it's pushing this a little bit further up. But it goes under the plywood pretty nicely. It doesn't go all the way down yet. So once this gets removed, I can push this down and this gap should flush up. Not too bad. So this is what it's gonna look like. Now I'm gonna get a hole saw and uh, make a passageway through here, either on this side or this side, for my mast wiring. I think I am gonna run that through the bilge, but I'm gonna do it through PVC to uh, protect the wires. And uh, I'm also gonna get, a, I wanna look into getting a harness, a wire harness that will attach at the bottom of the mast to make uh, mast removal uh, much easier uh, at the end of the season for when, you know, if I'm gonna be storing the boat indoors, you know, that mast has gotta come down. But uh, yeah, so far I think uh, I'm pleased this is gonna work. A little bit thicker than what I had in there originally. So one there, put one here. Another one here. That'll make uh, three separate compartments. I haven't decided what I'm doing with this back here yet. So I'm going to try to get this um, this piece out right here with my uh, multi-tool and see if the bulkhead piece doesn't fit any better.
Yeah, much better. Okay. 